Hi everyone, I'm Dan, welcome to Poetology and happy National Poetry Day. Today we're going to talk about paper magazines, some of my favourite poetry journals, which I think is very helpful, especially for new poets, because it can be difficult to know where to start, what to read, what's around, and where to try and submit your work. And I will focus exclusively on the UK, I think. I mean, some of these are international, but they're mainly UK-based and also focus on magazines that I've actually bought copies of in the past. So there are many more, and I'd love to hear some suggestions of other magazines that you like in the chat. The first one, I looked for it everywhere and I could not find it. I have some copies of Poetry London. I think it's the very first poetry magazine that I bought, and I remember that I got the one with Ocean Vuong on the cover just before they moved from photography to more artistic portraits on the cover. Poetry London is a huge poetry magazine so it's a bit more conservative sometimes. You tend to find the same names being published in that magazine again several times and there is a bit less space for new poets so it's not the easiest one to get into but it's a very good magazine to read and they are celebrating their 100th copy at the moment and so they released a hardcover. It looks beautiful, I don't have it unfortunately but if you have a copy let me know. I'd love to know how you're finding it. Second on my list is another magazine that I think is particularly beautiful, it's the Rialto and I just love the covers that they make and what I enjoy with the Rialto is that there is so much white space around the poems the journal is good quality and all the space is given to poetry so there aren't necessarily essays, interviews and other things that can be very enjoyable but sometimes you just want poetry and the Rialto is quite straightforward with that. It publishes more people that I know compared to Poetry London, so I find it slightly less intimidating. Can you f focus on the f face? Guys! Okay, thank you camera for actually focusing on my face. The next one is not a poetry magazine per se, it's Wasafiri, and I have two copies here of Wasafiri one on queer worlds, global queer, and the other one on native North American literature and literary activism. And they all contain more academic articles, interviews, fiction, drama, poetry, and book reviews. So it's a very broad inclusion of very different material, but there is always poetry. And also Wasafiri has competitions, and many other ways in which they help promote writing, new writing, and poets as well. If you want an in-depth view on an issue, then it's a great place to go when they have a specialized topic. The next one is very well known. It's the Poetry Review, published by the Poetry Society. This is a little thicker than the others, but a smaller format. It also has great art and a very good balance of poems versus essays. It's currently edited by Emily Berry and it publishes a broad variety of writers. I think it's a really good one to look at. Next is Magma Poetry. I've mentioned it before. They tend to have themed issues with different editors for each issue. So that means that they give a chance to so many different poets and it also keeps things interesting. So it keeps moving, it keeps changing. You will see different styles with each issue and it's a great magazine all around and also always beautiful. Compared to some magazines that just tend to have a style that is carried over from issue to issue and only undergoes slight shifts over time. I think Magma has a faster rhythm, is more attuned to what is happening and just catches trends very easily thanks to their model of using guest editors for every issue. This next one is Modern Poetry in Translation. 
this particular issue was focused on Japan. Only about half of the issue actually is about Japan. And so what they do is that they translate poetry. They use poetry in translation. So this is a perfect way of reading things that are written in other languages and not just English, because all the other ones so far are very largely focused on Anglophone poets, whereas this will go and seek out work from other countries and make it available to an Anglophone readership. I'm sorry about the camera not focusing properly. I have no idea why it's doing this. And this showcased some LGBTQ writers a few years ago and the issue was amazing and really brought to the forefront voices that had not been featured in the UK before. And it's done really important work to bring variety to this poetry scene. The next one is a small publication that I really appreciate because they published my very first poem and this is Tenebrae. I have two issues here. And Tenebrae publishes new poets and some more established poets as well. And it has poetry and essays. And it's a lovely publication that you should check out and a good place to try sending your work as well if you're just starting. I've already featured the next one in other videos. This is 14 poems. It's a queer poetry anthology that features 14 poets in every issue. It mostly has poets from the UK, but sometimes also voices from elsewhere. I keep discovering new poets that I love just by reading this journal. And the last two that I have to show you are more focused on issues around disability, chronic illness and the body with a feminist approach. One is Sick Magazine. This is issue three of Sick Magazine. It has fiction as well as poetry, it has art and some essays. It features a lot of different writers, so you really get a broad sense of what is going on. There is an amazing collage here. The last one, I don't actually have the magazine. I have Cusp, which is an anthology of feminist stories, essays and poetry exploring bodies, myth and magic. But it's published by Ake magazine and Ake magazine is another magazine that I think is really doing great work in disability studies and that I would like to try and send some work to. So I think that's it for today. There are many more magazines that I haven't mentioned. I'm thinking, for example, of the PN Review or Poetry Wales, simply because I don't have a paper copy. So I decided to just focus on the ones that I have at home. But let me know other titles that you think are great in the comments. And also next time I will be looking at online poetry publications. So if you have any suggestions for that, I'm also very interested and might include them. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again next week and enjoy National Poetry Day. Bye.